Today's podcast may contain scenes which some people may find upsetting. If you are affected by anything in this episode, please contact the number below. Insert KJ's number. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and Hovar from Behind the Container. How are you doing, fellas? <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so that's the second channel. <laughs> Little scruffier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was either that or behind behind the mistakes, but uh, yeah, <laughs> don't have the same ring to it. They still got it. Yep. The container <laughs> still got it. <laughs> <laughs> still got it, baby. <laughs> Haven't done anything to it, but it's there. Yeah, are you, are you keeping it or flogging it? Still undecided. Uh, well, the, the the guy who was interested in it is still interested, so yeah, it might uh, I might uh, take his backsies, <laughs> which is nice because then I can get a lathe. And the last week's project has made me have to rearrange my workshop, and now I suddenly like, ooh, I now know where I can fit a lathe, so. Oh, on the no. ceiling, or <laughs> yeah, I was gonna <laughs> turn it upside down because then you won't have the problem with all the metal filings getting into every rotating part, and you have to clean it. I mean, if you just turn it upside down, problem gone. <laughs> Clever. I now have a lathe, young men. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This episode is sponsored by Weathers Originals. <laughs> <laughs> And saga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us about it. Tell us about it. Oh, so, um, yeah, no, I went to work on um, Saturday morning, and um, after I'd been to work, I went to pick up the lathe. And that's, that's pretty much it. No. <laughs> it was a pretty big beast for a table version, wasn't it? It's... It was a little bit longer than I thought than I was expecting. It's one point six meters long. That is very long for a tabletop version, I would say. Yeah, I mean I can chop it down. It's just on like two poles, so you can you can trim the poles down if you wanted, but uh, you know, as soon as I do that I'm gonna want to turn something one point six meters long, aren't I? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we need to, it can't never be long enough, so <laughs> <laughs> I know, but some, if it gets over a certain length, it's uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah, but you don't have to use the whole uh, thing, I've heard. <laughs> so, I mean, you can just use the the bit of it that... Uh, the, KJ's the, the, normally so on board with this. We're just pulling faces today. The action end? Can you? Is it called that on the lathe? Is it the action end? and? Uh, I think you can call it the headstock. Yeah. Yeah. And then they got the tail stock. <laughs> oh, KJ's all grown up today. Ah, oh, it's only Tuesday. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm just not as uh, penis focused as you are. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Don't put, care. Some, put some butter on it. You're in. <laughs> now you're talking. <laughs> Yeah, I went to uh, went to pick up the lathe on uh, on Saturday, as I said, and um, the guy I got it from was just really nice guy, younger than me. So it's not obviously not all old men that have lathes. He'd uh, recently upgraded, got to have a look around his little workshop. He just did turning, so yeah, he did some nice things. But that's the thing, though. You already have a lathe. What are you going to do with that one? I've still got the lathe. And I'll just keep it in the background for any inspiration. Aesthetics? Nah, nah, nah. I'll just keep it around just in case there's any uh, future inspiration for it, for destroying it in a spectacular manner, I think. <laughs> and every time that you think that something is troublesome on the new lathe, you can just glance over at the old one and think, it would have been even harder on that one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
so what have you used it for so far? Oh, for some reason, the first thing that popped into my mind was making an egg cup. That's, so, that's a good thing. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't eat boiled eggs. Then but, I don't really see the reason. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the first round thing I thought of that was uh, a little bit more complicated. Well, it's good to have a small container to put small screws in and that sort of thing, perhaps. So, yeah. yeah. The cat quite likes it as a cat toy. Okay. Yeah. First cool. homemade oak cat toy, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the first thing I thought about is should we expect whiskey uh, tumblers for uh, Scarpet Festival then? Oh, Jesus. You're asking for presents again. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was the reason for turning. Exactly, work, yeah. It? I never said I was going to make a Vard one, though. <laughs> 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 like every time we bring Oslo up, oh, bring me a present, bring me a present. It's so needy. <laughs> I don't drink whiskey, so I don't need one. But uh, yeah. but is that the, the, the way you're going for something tumbler-shaped, or are you going uh, long, <laughs> long stuff or bowls, <laughs> or what are you aiming for first? So I will definitely make um, a whiskey tumbler, because, yes, that is why I originally wanted one. But um, it's just, it's not, I don't want to go down the turning route all the time. It's just another another tool in the workshop, you know, for when I do want to make something round. So, yeah, it's just an addition, really. Yeah. So will um, Michelle be more in the in the workshop as well, now she that you've got it? She has had a little go. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the beauty about it is on the other side of the workshop, so she can be in there turning and you know messing about while I'm on the main workbench still doing my videos and things so that works quite nicely because generally we can't uh, dual project because you know one one big workbench gets taken over by the dominant partner <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all know who she is <laughs> yeah I'm Some, seeing a someone future. wears the pants and someone <laughs> yeah. just Where's shorts? <laughs> <laughs> I see a future when we have a lot of outtakes of you trying to talk to the camera and you're like, duff, 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 in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, shut up. I'm trying to film here. <laughs> well, as, as a result of um, picking the lathe up on Saturday, I um, went into the workshop on Saturday and had to site it properly and fix it into the bench, which meant an alteration of some drawers underneath, a big tidy up of the workshop. So I spent all day in the workshop and actually didn't get and didn't get much done on my current project. But you got to tidy your workshop. I got a, I did I do love a tidy workshop, KJ. <laughs> yeah, but I, I did get something done on the uh, on the new project and I've done a little bit on it since. So that hopefully will be done by the weekend. I'm ready for the big reveal? <laughs> Go for it. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. <laughs> so what have you two been up to? Well, not much. Um, preparing for barbecue season. <laughs> <Looks like. laughs> oh, I'm so looking forward to part two of that video. Uh, I got some ideas. Uh, did not think about it. I, I built the, the welding table and then once I got the wheels on, it looks good, but <laughs> kind of also familiar. And then a message ticked in. <laughs> Ooh, a grill, and yes, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you really can't unsee it. <laughs> then the question is, would it have been cheaper to just get a grill? Because I'm guessing you could use... I'm guessing I could use my grill as a welding table, although the, the slits in between are not big enough to get clamps in, but you get magnetic clamps, so uh, yeah, it would probably work. If you just weld your project to the grill first, then it'll hold it fast, won't it? Yeah, and some materials, like for instance, cast iron and so <clears> on, <throat> is difficult to weld unless you preheat it. And then if you already have a grill function, you can preheat the, the material before you weld. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's not a dumb idea at all. <laughs> <laughs> the question I got when seeing it, that I haven't asked is, did you tune the pipes? Because it looks very much like a xylophone. Oh! <laughs> what, what, what key are they in? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, which key they're in, I can easily figure that one out, but they're all in the same key then, so... <laughs> so it's a but bit yeah. boring instrument, you mean? <laughs> but it would have been cool to make a... a that size xylophone. But I, I don't know it... how to play it, though, so it would be kind of boring, but, I mean, there might be a Hellcorder 4.0 with a xylophone <laughs> section at the back. I think it could still work as a xylophone as it is. Just um, you know, those you can get self-adhesive um, electric pickups, singular ones, and if you just position those in different spaces and under each bar. Yeah, and I could weigh them differently, but they should not be welded to the subframe. No. Then they they should be free floating, so to speak. So yeah, there is a. It's hard. It's harder to combine that with the function of a welding table as. Uh, Opposing the, the grill. <laughs> yeah, you don't really want it to be that loose and flexible as a. Is it called vibro? Uh, isn't it called vibraphone when it's a metal? Xylophone is. Uh, is Not wooden, sure. isn't it? Hmm. Well, that's... Doesn't matter. It's a metal one, a glockenspiel. No, a glockenspiel, I think, is the, the hanging tubes. Is it? Yeah. That's yeah, wind chimes, think, isn't it? You're thinking of wind chimes. That's the same thing, isn't it? It's that's just a, a small... <laughs> if you're hitting a wind chime, it's a glockenspiel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, now we're pissing off some music nerd in the audience, perhaps. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't like wind chimes in people's gardens. When, they're, when they were all the rage a few years ago in next-door neighbor's gardens, they're like, shut up. Yeah, because I, I just had that idea. I have some off cuts, so I can make a huge ass wind chime and put up. But yeah, I, I find them annoying as hell myself, <laughs> so I just have to put it up and go on vacation or something. But then again, I, I kind of like the neighbors. So. Yeah, wind chimes are fun for like 30 seconds. <laughs> I would say. It was a nice video, Havar. Yeah. And. Well, there is a few snippets there. I did some uh, evening work, and without the proper lighting, it became kind of dim. But so is the presenter, so <laughs> even that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the uh, when you present your Patreons to the uh, audience as your top three of three Patreons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. So, uh, yeah, they all get a place on the podium. Um, Definitely. <laughs> uh, have you had a chance to try it out yet? Or, or are you sick of welding for the moment? Well, it depends on... I haven't welded anything else, but I have welded on it after it became a table. Um, but, um, yeah, I've been measuring out and... It's almost the right dimension for some of these gray euro boxes. So it's very easy to make some angle brackets and just fit a lot of those in maybe, but I'm not sure if that's the route I want to go. Uh, unfortunately, I stumbled. <laughs> I was going to make the, the thumbnail for a video and then there's a lot of people who has made welding tables. So I just did a quick search on YouTube just to see so I don't... Uh, just copy someone and then I stumbled over a guy who made a fantastic table with a lot of functions that I would like to integrate but some of them are a bit difficult because I don't have the same shape table but since I'm using square tubing that are open I can easily make inserts and he has made inserts so he can take his metal cutting saw the same that I have and you can just slide it into the openings and then you have an extension on your table so then your entire table becomes a support for the the material you're cutting and of course there's all the brackets for hanging off angle grinders but you also have air and power in it so you can just run an extension cord and hook air up to it and then you can use all the tools he wants and then if you got some uh, ikea have some metal shelves as well so he we just spray painted those in the same color and pop riveted them on but it came out really nice i think i'm gonna lend some of his ideas in the next video so i think the upgrade might come faster than 
he estimated two years to never. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. like mine then. I just realized that it was four and a half years ago that I published my Mark One of a welding table. Uh, with the intention of, of upgrading it over time when I <laughs> knew what I needed. And now apparently is the time. So yeah. Have you have you used your table much, KJ? Yeah, every time I've welded something small, yeah, I've used it. But I seldom weld something small. It's most mostly something big that needs to be on the ground or needs some kind of special support. So yeah, fair enough. So have you got any making done? Yeah, I've been making some progress on my weld, welding table as well. Uh, the actual <clears throat> table part is uh, is done, but I need to do some some extra thing is as well uh i mean hooks for hanging stuff as you said and that sort of thing so it won't be done uh, in a while but at least i've made the the top plate is finished finally for, after laying in parts in the workshop for at least half a year oh wow <laughs> just moving it around because yeah i'll do that later i'll do that later okay how's the editing been coming on uh, it's been going uh, going great. It was going great, uh, and then dialing back to going fine. Uh, because when <laughs> I I was uh, more or less done with the edit, I thought, and I looked through it. And went, Wait a minute, I'm missing one entire part uh, when you. Um, this is a tufting rug we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, where you fix it and glue the back and trim it. Where where are those clips? I, I can't find them. And I look through the folder. No, nothing there. Okay, going in my archive. No, nothing there. Now I'm getting a bit worried. Okay, maybe they were mixed up with the files from the rose cage. That, that could happen because I did them similarly. Looking, I can't find those files either. Oh no! And then I found in a subfolder like fifty forgotten clips that I'm going to sort these later and later oh, never Jesus. came. <laughs> So I, I found some clips that were meant for the, the lightsaber as well, the, all the outro thing that I forgot that oh, I filmed even. No. <laughs> I thought it was a bit abrupt end, but yeah, I was pressed for time. I didn't do it. Nope. I just, I just had four, <laughs> four files that I forgot that I had. So. But at so least it, you found them. Um, I recorded uh, the outro for the welding table. Um, I think I, I made five or six takes before I like finally like, oh, Nailed it. This is the one. Then shut down my workshop and went in, downloaded the video clips, and hmm, where's the audio? <laughs> so I haven't <laughs> turned the mics on. So uh, I got like uh, six useless uh, <laughs> silent movie clips. So I had to go oh, no. back out again and re, -re, -re record it. So that's annoying. You, you did well to record it as well as you did because. When, if ever I have to do that many takes, I just completely lose my complete sense of humor with it normally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you come to a point where you just start fucking up because you remember all that you already did good and what you should not do, but then you focus too much on it. So you just end up doing it again and then fuck. And then you have to, yeah. So at some point you just need to fuck it. I'll do it later. But of course, yeah. I had finished the rest of the video. I just needed the outro. So, I mean, I needed it done. But usually, when, about the time when I nailed the, the text, I've done it so many times that my voice has gone in totally dead. And I'm <laughs> yeah. talking like this. And have, I mean, the, the light has gone out of my eyes a long time ago. So then I have to. I, I have to start by laughing or something like that just to get a smile on my face and be yeah. a little brighter. You want <laughs> otherwise it's just useless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, some of what I've been doing. I've also uh used the table saw more than I ever done before. Uh, oh, wow. ripping up some uh, some wood for uh a small fence. No, not really a fence, more a divider thingy for the for the patio. Um how are you so, finding the table saw? Are you still in the fierce, fearful stage, or I'm you getting around it? to it? Uh, we we are getting to know each other, and and I I have I I sort of 
asserted my dominance by uh, cutting the the riving knife in half because it was protruding too much and being in the way. Can you not just lower it? No, no, oh, okay. not in a way that I I found at least. It seems oh, to be okay. affixed to the blade height because you put the the hood thingy over on it as well. Oh, uh, for the so extraction. I, I, yeah, it has a little. Not, and then, so that means that you can't half cut something because the riving knife is in the way. Yeah, that's mm. why people remove those a lot, those hood things. That's why it's never on my table. So yeah, but but I thought it was rather nice to have the the riving knife just to steer it and that sort of thing. So I just cut off the the top five centimeters or something like that with the angle grinder <laughs> just to show who was boss. <laughs> is it still coming up level with the top of the blade, or is it much shorter? No, than the it's about an inch lower. Okay, is that is that still doing its job at that then? Yeah. Okay. So it's. You need the riving knife a safety feature, don't you? Yeah, yeah but it's, it's... it's not just there to hold the hood. No, I mean that's why I just didn't remove it. Yeah, no. fair enough. Otherwise, that was an option, but no, <laughs> I cut it off instead. So I've been uh, making some sawdust uh, like never before, but I realized I have to uh, do some some work in the dust extraction area to actually get the hose to fit on, because I did a. Yeah. Uh, uh, a clever solution with a lot of pipes to to get the correct <laughs> diameter, but it's got like two centimeters to grip on, and that's not really much. So I need something right. to hold it there as well because it fell off a lot of times, and you realize that it's fallen off because okay. of the dust cloud around it. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on the dust collection as well, um, or I reversed some temporary or. Uh, preliminary dust collection because I wanted these cyclones and a dust collection integrated in my work table and I never got around to finish it. And then I found out that if I take these uh, cyclone parts off again, I could just mount them to a, like a regular bucket and use that. So that's the, the plan now. So I spent a few hours yesterday just uh, demolishing old work and uh, now preparing to do... Um, yeah, basically redo it, and nice. of course I got the got the oldest to learn how to use a, a ratchet and uh, on Braco screws. So yeah, we had a father daughter session in the workshop <laughs> yesterday. It's kind of nice. That's <laughs> uh, nice. My my daughter's gone past it now. She doesn't want to come in anymore. She but she did go through a phase when it was first built. Yeah, wanting to come in, and she used the bandsaw and all sorts. But uh, no, she says she's uh, gone off it a little bit more. But she's been doing a lot of sewing this week. She's pretty good with the sewing machine, which is nice. I mean, as yeah, as but... long as they are making in some respect, and I don't know, yeah. there will be a period where they like, all right, uh, I'm not going to do like my parents does, but uh, at least if they had a period and they kind of got it under their skin, it's easier to pick it up at a later stage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just ha just having a workshop available, I think, is then and and being free to actually use it. Yeah. At the moment, my my kids, they, when we try to, we, I mean, we we disassemble some, I mean, speakers or old phones and that sort of thing, uh, just for the fun to see what's what's in inside, and they quickly get bored of trying to use a screwdriver and it doesn't if it doesn't work the first time, so they're mostly if if a crowbar isn't <laughs> isn't the main tool, then they're not really interested. It feels like. <laughs> they're, they're a demolishing crew at the moment. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I have the difficulty with, um, you know, either Michelle or Lily wanting to come in the workshop as well. If I'm if I'm mid project, then it's it's really hard to let somebody else come in and tidy your stuff how you've got it, you know, ready for the next bit of filming, if you like, off the workbench. It upsets yeah. the flow a little bit for me. Yeah. I one thing is the workshop, but I, I can't do any of my projects having the kids around there because there's, they're still too young. So, I mean, you have to watch that they are not cutting themselves or something. And, of course, they're like, what is this? And while they are asking, they're already grabbing for it. So, it's like, no, 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 no <laughs> don't do that. And, of course, they want to, like, they've seen me use everything and, like, um, all right, I'd like to use that saw no we'll start with the screwdriver and of course that is boring I, even i find screwdrivers boring but still there is a 
they're they're still not old enough that they can actually do a, a self check on safety. So of course uh, you need to be there and supervise everything and almost hold their hands. So uh, I'm maybe not the most patient one, but I'm trying to get better. So I don't <laughs> discourage them. It's a learning experience for all parties. Yeah. yeah. I had a youngest in the workshop today because he didn't like the the masts on uh, a wooden boat that his uh, grandfather made for him. So I said, okay, <laughs> then we can we can cut them off if you if you like. Let's go down to the workshop. Uh, so we did, and he got to hold the saw, and and I hold the the boat the boat, and and he cut them off. So he was re- well pleased with that. And he was the, the only kid uh, at kindergarten when they were making a, uh, a model of a wardrobe. Uh, he was the only one who asked for a saw when when they were cutting down the dowel to oh, cool. uh, to make uh, to have to put the clothes on. And that's something he's been uh, he's been rather proud of because the teacher was so impressed by him <laughs> wanting a saw to actually cut it instead of using scissors or breaking it. Or did he get a saw? He he got us all. Oh, I mean, brilliant! Use it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. I mean, it's good to have to let them do stuff when they want to, to be ready when they want to, uh, and not be dismiss- dismissive of it. Then, yeah. But it's hard. Yeah, that's the most difficult thing I find is. Um, I was uh, cleaning out the shed as well here the other day, and I have a lot of leftover materials there after we built the like the outdoor cabin uh, here in uh, our garden. And I've been saving it, but I'm realizing it's in the way. I'm not going to build anything with it. But we could make a cat house or something like that, just a very square box with a roof just for the kids to learn to use a hammer and nail. But it's like, it's very hard for me even that project to make it interesting for the kids and like if they're nailing two planks together and they're not perpendicular or it's a it's a slight <laughs> angle like oh i really want to go in and adjust and make it perfect or make it 90 degrees but it's not about that it's just letting them build something crappy but letting them feel that they have accomplished something and then i just i can't really go in afterwards and and fix it because then I ruined their creation. Then they're like, all right, didn't we do good enough because you had to come in and correct us afterwards. So I just have to like, it's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, around that a little bit. Um, I think it was about a year ago. We made a, a bird box for Michelle for Mother's Day or a birthday. I can't quite remember. And uh, Lily came in and said, I want to make something for mom. I said, I thought you want to make sure the bird box was right. You go away and make me a cardboard model the exact size that you want to make and she did that came back with this cardboard model and then we um, took the model apart and laid all the pieces out on on wood and cut it all out exactly to her dimensions which she got a big kick out of and obviously I didn't let her use the the table saw to cut the pieces out but she got to sand and glue and screw everything together and put 15 coats of varnish on it afterwards (laughs) (laughs) But that, that made it an enjoyable process doing it that way. That's why I think... I, I've seen you get a uh, scroll saw for kids to cut cardboard so they can actually make a cardboard creations. Uh, but I even think that a standard scroll saw is maybe the least dangerous uh, power saw. Of course, I'm not letting my kids use the the bench saw or the table saw. Uh, on the bandsaw, I mean, um, without getting a few more years on them. But I think the scroll saw, I might maybe let the youngest, no, the oldest one, try already. I mean, yeah, that's you, probably you, safe. you can cut you, but it's going to just nick your skin a bit. And then you're going to, ow, and you're going to pull your finger away. And then yeah. it, it won't grab you and pull you because it's just moving up and down. Yeah, Lily, Lily had a go on our scroll saw when we got that. That was just after Makers uh, last year. But then, you know, she was 12 at that point. So she's just that bit older. But yeah, they do seem they do seem as safe as a, a saw can be, I, I guess. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't let her have a go on my new bandsaw, though. The old bandsaw we used to let her use. 
and I thought all bandsaws were safe until I got my new one, and it's got a bit more power and much sharper blades on. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can slip a lot quicker on that one. <laughs> yeah, but still, of course, I'm probably taking too big a risk on my bandsaw, but it it feels a lot safer than the table saw, so. I do a lot more dodgy angles and sawing on the <laughs> bandsaw than I would ever. Uh, I mean, the they, table yeah. saw, I'm actually yeah. afraid when I'm using it because I'm standing to the side and I keep my fingers well off and still there's going to be an accident at some point, but hopefully then I won't cut anything off, but something is going to fly. I've had a few minor incidents with the table saw, but uh, it's never never quite put me off. The table saw I had before this one I bought very, very cheaply, and that one terrified me. It just made a, such an awful racket when you turned it on for a starter. Yeah. I really, at some point, would want a saw stop or a saw with that kind of functionality. Just, of course, my mind wanders to the, the worst things that can happen, and I just envision myself, what if I trip on the power wire and I just grab something and then you just slice all your fingers off of course when you have a saw stop there is a chance that won't happen but yeah I think I'm too cheap to have a saw stop I would just be scared to accidentally set it off and then it's costing a thousand bucks to to replace it I think yeah. it's a hundred dollars each time isn't it something like that yeah, something it's like really that. expensive at least yeah. I, um, too expensive but for that my makes taste. you think though right you get real and then of course you have the safety switch you can turn off because when you're cutting aluminum or something like that then of course you can turn it off and then you just never switch it on again and then yeah that would probably end up there. and then so it gives I... you a false safety so you do a really dodgy move because i mean if it doesn't work it will shut off and then of course it won't and it cuts your head off or something like that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to uh, ever get rid of a table saw that can't cut metal. No. And then again, oh, so... it's the price. I mean, I, I like my table saw asses. It, it, it fills all my table saw needs. So, of course, spending a lot of money on a saw stop. I mean, I can get a lot of other fancy tools, dangerous tools <laughs> for that price. So. <laughs> I would love an upgrade. I'd like, um, I really like the Laguna one. Uh, Swedish maker Pierre's got one. It's a really nice looking black table saw, but they're just too big for my workshop at the moment. Take up too much space. That's the problem. Yeah, I've yeah. been looking at the, the Laguna or Jet uh, 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 for a bandsaw. I want a full size bandsaw, but even after rearranging my workshop, I can't really, even on casters, it would be hard to find the space for it, but at some point, I think that's going to be a good investment to have a full-size saw with resaw capacity because if I want to do uh, cut down something to make tables or, or thinner or something, I, I don't have the capacity to do that, and it's not strong enough even. So, uh, But it is an investment for something that is well, it's not used too much. But then again, if you get it, you'll use it more. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that's good enough for resawing. That would be nice. But I mean, the, the space of it. I mean, you just look at uh, Laura Kampf's new workshop in America. Yeah. That's <laughs> with those butt ugly professional machines. <laughs> Why could they not paint them a nice color? <laughs> because, <laughs> at the I mean, very least. Yeah. I think it's a. Look like that, vomit. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we are a professional brand. We don't care what it looks like. You just have to do this one thing and do it really, really well. <laughs> yeah, and they don't care about anything else. But I mean, it takes up so much space, and then it's like uh, shop class woodworking style. You need a yeah, it's too much space. If you only do woodworking, it's fine. But yeah, I want yeah. to do everything. So it's it's funny because we've not seen her do much woodworking over the past few years, have we? <laughs> no, not if it's not connected to the house. No, uh, so I'm expecting some woodworking in the the next videos coming up. Going back to your cutting funny angles on the bandsaw, um, Michelle saw your Instagram post where you um, showed the red wall. And she said, yeah. what, are those sh what are those shoes? What are those shoes on the red wall? <laughs> I said, watch, you need to watch this video now. And so we watched you make the uh, rotating shoes. 
last night. <laughs> and he, he was doing some really dodgy stuff with the bandsaw <laughs> oh, that day. And Michelle saying, can you use a bandsaw like that? I'm like, no, not really. I, I did mean, they, act- they have tilting tables on the bandsaw, so, yeah. but nobody seems to use them. I saw, I think right before I did that, I actually saw Jimmy D'Aresta do a bandsaw video where he cut funny angles and it's like, you need to tilt it in this direction in case it grabs it, it will pull it this direction and not that. And you should definitely not do this, but in a pinch. And then he just went on and did it anyway. So that's why I felt a bit uh, comfortable doing it. But yeah. (laughs) You look at the highest professional there is and think, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. (laughs) I think we all do, don't we? Oh, yes. Yeah. And then I realized, oh, I didn't make a, a vertical video of that one for uh, for TikTok because I've done some of the vertical videos. I've, I've just dumped over there. So now, now I have a new one without having to do the work. So I just uh, uploaded it yesterday and I got a few comments on it. And one of them we already discussed. Instead of having the shoes turn, why don't you have like a, a lazy Susan uh, with a sensor? So you just yeah. <laughs> leave any shoes there and it will turn it around. And that's, I'm going to build that sometime. So, <laughs> yeah, you absolutely should. <laughs> when it's not in use, put sushi on it and have that rotating <laughs> round. <laughs> yeah. Mm, this sushi tastes a bit weird, yeah. a bit like feet. Mm. <laughs> but. I, I need to think a bit about that because that is that is taking it to the next level because that I would actually use because I, I basically use the slippers or clogs or whatever in the workshop and having something that actually reliably just turn them for me every time, that would be awesome. But then I have to make it like so it actually can uh, keep up with the wear and tear. <laughs> I would more like more need some kind of signaling system that after i taking shoes off there goes off a little light uh that shines for like half an hour so i remember where i put them and actually <laughs> see where they are so oh i was wearing those shoes because now the workshop is on on the in the cellar which with an own exit and I have some shoes there, and I have some shoes up in the uh, in the hallway as well. So yeah, I go out and in a different way. So I take one pair of shoes and go to another place, and then All leave right. them there, and take I... another pair of shoes. And they, there are shoes everywhere, <laughs> and I don't really know where everything. I is. have the same problem because I can exit the house on three sides, and of course, depending on on what I need to do on the way to my workshop i alternate and then of course at some point you end up with all the shoes one at place. one exit <laughs> and it's not yes. where you need them and then you have to go down and you have to bring uh, two or three pairs up just to try to redistribute them and then what if you put a lazy or you don't need to put a lazy susan on it but what if you get a cheap doll like one of these um like automated lawn mowers and you just program it, and then you need a chip or something in your pocket so it knows where you are. <laughs> so if you move at that end of the house, it, ta- it takes your slippers, which you left on it, and then it goes around <laughs> the house. So when you, if you go out there, he's already there with your shoes, hair master. <laughs> and then when you go around the house, he just follows after you. So when you go out again, you just leave your shoes on him, and then he just like uh, go and present them wherever you need them. So you want a robot dog to fetch your slippers. Yeah. <laughs> it would need a really quick obstacle avoidance uh, function for me because I'll often get halfway down the hallway or halfway across the kitchen. Oh, shit, I forgot something. Doing a abrupt turn and head back in the wrong direction. I would go yeah, arse n- over tit over that thing. <laughs> it needs to be extremely quick. Um, I also I was in this shop where they had a lot of model trains and one of them... Um, I've seen these in restaurants as well, where they do them, use them to deliver your food. They just put it on and then they send a train over and then you just pick it up. I could, of course, have tracks around the house because, of course, uh, there is some obstacles and it needs to be quick because I can easily run from one end to the house inside if I'm in a bit of a hurry. 
and I don't think there's a like a, a lawnmower that has that speed today <laughs> to catch up with that. No, <laughs> radio controlled car. They're fast. Yeah. But I also want these vacuum tube system as they, that they use in oh, large hospitals and yeah, so on. So maybe yeah, I should yeah. have that. So you just you just put your shoes down in a box and it's like foom, foom. <laughs> then it goes away somewhere and then it, <laughs> it just exits wherever you are. Like just press am, a press a that button. Really sends foom, things foom, up or down, push. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but that would be cool. Then I can have a central storage of shoes up in the attic, and then I just. Wherever exit I'm at, I just press a button and it just instantly delivers shoes. Fum, fum. And, uh, are we talking more like a shoe mortar on the on the roof <laughs> with a guidance system <laughs> to the different doors? <laughs> shoes for exit five, please. Yeah. <laughs> I was just That's thinking it'd be a really good way to get rid of the rubbish from the house. Just that stick it well. in, it shoots it straight out the roof. <laughs> I mean, it's not very ecological, but <laughs> no. Fun. You just have the coordinates for the neighbors you don't like. <laughs> but I know that. I mean, and they have been doing this for years. Um, of course, they collect our garbage, and then they collect the food waste, and then they collect plastics, and then it's paper. But everything goes to the recycling plant, and then it, it's dumped into the same furnace, delivering hot water to uh, hospitals and, and whatnot, because they are not set up to... Um, I saw a Norwegian documentary here. I mean, they there is no technology to sort the various kinds of plastics. So it's not any economy in just trying to sort it out and figure it out, so, so they just end up putting it in the same... Uh, high temperature furnace with your food waste and everything because people put a lot of things in there as well so it doesn't really make sense to try and sort it out so they just burn it to a crisp and then they get rid of the rest and then I like burning things so why can't I have um, I might be colored by visiting uh, Erasmus's <laughs> forge but uh I could build a forge for burning our rubbish. I can have a furnace. And then, of course, you could just dump everything in a chute and then press a button and <laughs> it incinerates it. And then uh, it's much more easier to get it into the garbage bin. And I've already, <laughs> well, reduced the volume for the garbage man. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the problem there is perhaps the, all the interesting fumes you are creating at a, a very localized and not unfiltered close to uh close to home that is not perhaps so nice but yeah it's, it's, you it need is to a do problem it properly but yeah it is a problem that uh, so many of the plastics aren't easily uh, uh converted or reuse reusable uh and that oil is so cheap so it's not yeah, you don't uh, have economic in incentives to actually take care of it and that also annoys me because we have a box or a bin for glass and metals. And of course, <laughs> you need to wash the jam jars before you put them in there. That's annoying. And then, of course, uh, I saw them had a campaign on, was it television or whatnot, that you should not put metal in your metal bin box because it, they, they only... They only want you to put like these tin food containers and that kind of metal but if you put like a rebar in there that will just jam up in their system so they have to manually sort that out and i kind of think but it is metal you have a metal box and of course uh, i do metal work so i mean separating that in a different bin and driving that to the skip to deliver it while I have a bin outside my door, which the bin collector comes and it says metal on it, but I can't put that in there. That's freaking annoying. Yeah, but that's that's uh, it's mostly an economical for, uh, question because they're not getting paid for it. <laughs> they're getting paid for um, uh, packaging, yeah. not actual stuff. So 
you're not throwing big bits of metal away in your wheelie bin anyway, because you're a metal guy now anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a very small off cut. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, we're when you're down the size to screws, perhaps then you throw it away. Yeah, I mean, stripped. It, it's <laughs> it's mostly stripped screws, and of course some off cuts <laughs> yeah. that you can't even get into the clamp to do something with them. So, do you not throw yours on next door's driveway? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, just me but, then. But then again, <laughs> if I, if I get a, an incinerator and a forge, then I, I can just collect it, and when there is enough, I can just melt it into a, a square. Scrap Damascus. Yeah. <laughs> Scrap Ascus. Um... <laughs> Scrap Ascus. <laughs> Are you getting a forge now? <laughs> well, I got very inspired, so uh, but I don't really have the room for it. Uh... <laughs> Do you have the neighbors for it? Um. Uh... Well, they are so old, so they can always just tune down their hearing aids, so it shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm not going down that road. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking about taking like the the basic uh, Forge 101 course in uh, September. And uh, also at Osmos, uh, we were discussing about uh, having a meetup at the... Uh, his workshop on the Friday before his carpet festival and as well for everyone who wants to attend. <laughs> I, was, I was invited to that and um, it ends just as I get there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we discussed that because he like, but you know, Glenn arrives kind of late, doesn't he? So yeah, I don't remember the, the exact time, but I think it's going to be uh, like, uh, <laughs> he just show up and then we have to leave to not... Uh, disturb the yeah. neighbors because he's actually the the forge is in a residential area so oh wow how was it oh it's really nice i mean it's uh well to, to me it's uh it's a perfect size and it's like a nice atmosphere and it's it's very easy to get there you can park your car outside but it is a lovely area like just outside of oslo or Depending on how you count it, it is a part of Oslo, so it's very central, basically. At least from me coming from that direction by car. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful forge, if you can call it that. Um, of course, it's a, we discussed it a lot. It's, it's a difference between like welding metal work and then blacksmithing and then you have like the 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 thin sheet metal guys who make uh well like coach builders and so on the so there are so many facets of metal work yeah yeah and of course we we both agree that uh like coach building is really cool but you need a set of tools just to get you started and of course when you get into that it's a total profession of it all of its own and you need to it's a steep learning curve. You have to learn quite a bit before you actually can make something decent out of it. And of course, him being a blacksmith full time, uh, honing that skill, he, he doesn't have enough hours in the day and neither do I. So and of course, it would be very cool to actually take a flat piece of metal and just start rolling it into whatever shape you can imagine. Yeah. Did you come? Uh, Sorry, I'm KJ. No, go on. I was just about to say, did you come back with a souvenir? No. Um, I could have, but I said no, because everyone who attended got to make uh, like a small souvenir for themselves, but it was too, oh, okay. too many people for me, so I just uh, hung at the back and uh, supervised the waffle maker. So, um, <laughs> but next time. I hope we didn't have any raspberries on them. No, uh, stayed clear of that and the cream. <laughs> so yeah, used a uh, Norwegian brown cheese, and that, that works. <laughs> Yuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah but everyone should do a uh, uh, a weekend uh, blacksmith course. I think uh, every maker should do it just to try it out, because it's it is weird but intuitive at the same time. So yeah, yeah. I want to. Of course, he has a knife blade course. You can do a one-day knife blade. And then, of course, he will show you the steps so that you end up with your knife blade. But in one day, you can't learn any theory. 
and you have to like do this, do this, do this, do this, because you basically know nothing. So it, it's nice to have that introductionary course uh, in the beginning so that you learn that everything is hot, so don't touch things. So you use the pliers and, uh, of course, uh, get some theory in before you do the knife course. But I think that's far as I want to push it. I, I want to have a knife where I also made the blade but i think doing the the basic course for a weekend first will give me more joy of actually making the blade because you know also why you're doing the things that you're doing not just because you're getting told yeah and then you have more chances to mess stuff up as well and that is I mean, it, I mean the one i did we we did a nail a hook and a leaf on the first day and I messed the leaf up totally. That's a, just went into pieces because it got too small. And then on the second day, you got to do a project that you felt that you could finish in a day, whatever you wanted. And that was perfect for me. That's because cool. then you, you could just try and fail miserably. <laughs> you could push <laughs> your limits and, and try to understand what you were doing the first day. So that was good. I like... I do like the idea of forging. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's fantastic. You take such a hard material and, you know, manipulate it in different ways to create what you want. But I've never understood why they don't finish it to, you know, when you buy a kitchen knife, it doesn't look like it's come from a forge shop, does it? It doesn't look hammered and whatnot. I don't know. I don't understand why they can't finish grinding and finish things so they look nice and shiny and new. I mean, they can, but... Uh, I think it's partly that you want it to look hand forged, so you know that it is hand forged. And yeah. secondly, I mean, the grinding part is you, you need someone, a grinder to do that. I mean, the person grinder uh, yeah. who wants to do that, and that seems tedious and takes yeah. a lot of time. And then, then the knife gets even more expensive. Yeah. yeah. In my brief, brief time as an engineer, I mean, we had a, a bed grinder where the, the bed moves and the grinder stays still, but it was magnetic. You know, and you could literally grind things to a mirror finish on that thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's just the finishing part. I, I do like it, but I I would I like I like things to if I if I make a piece of furniture for the house, for instance, I don't not sand it and not put finish on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you can do that. I mean, you need to at... know I made yes. it myself, so I'm going to leave it uh, <laughs> yeah. rough rough cut and not sand it. Yeah. If you look at Feather Knives uh, on Instagram, I mean, his stuff looks polished to shine. It, it doesn't really look handmade at all. It looks like it came from a factory, but right. <laughs> but knowing that he did it, it's yeah, it looks pricey as well. Yeah, and it should be because <laughs> damn, that's a lot of hours in a piece. Yeah, I don't understand knife makers. <laughs> I don't have that. Uh, compulsion that specific uh, combination of leathers that you need to, yeah, to do that kind of work you certainly can't have an instagram account successfully as, as a knife maker can you that just keeps just apparently not <laughs> <laughs> because that's the most uh, awful thing you can have a knife apparently terrible yeah so uh, my current project the i might as well tell you what it is because it, may be done and I'll probably be editing the day that this comes out so it won't be much of a spoiler so I'm making <laughs> an instrument as I said <laughs> and yeah. it's a it's another strum stick but with the fire extinguisher so I didn't know whether you know it's a fire extinguisher and a strum stick can you call it a fire stick or will I be in trouble from Amazon <laughs> good question um strum extinguisher I mean, it's going to look pretty steampunky. So the other title could be steampunk strum stick. Steam stick? No, that's not. Steam stick. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like something for straightening your clothes out, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe you can use it as that. Um, so are you going to use both halves or? No, just one half. Yeah. Or are you using a regular neck or is that bolted on some uh, piece of pipe or something like that. <laughs> I was going to go with a steel piece and weld it on. But I lifted up a piece of... Um, I went to the local DIY store and had a look at um, some 20 mil box section steel thick enough to weld. And uh, it was just so heavy. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, heavy so. metal. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've still got the other half. I mean, if this is if this is a success, I can still do something with the other half. I can do a heavy metal version next time round. <laughs> and compare the two. Yeah. I actually went to the store yesterday and I stumbled over a fire extinguisher, uh, uh, the one liter kind, the small one. Yeah. And it was like twenty quid. I mean, yeah. You can't get them cheaper used. So I was like, it feels wrong to buy a brand new box <laughs> fresh just to empty it in a bin bag and <laughs> cut it open. But yeah. How, how old are the fire extinguishers you have at home? I mean, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's at least not more than 15 years so, i mean that's uh, <laughs> it's, it's still red um but that's that, you, that's you a can... huge one and uh, i don't want to use that for uh, uh the water gun project because then i can't lift it for very long <laughs> <So>. <laughs> i, I think mean... that if professionally if you rent fire extinguishers they there are they aren't older than a year no. uh, so i mean you, you really should replace them at home uh, so why don't uh, tell that to the wife that you yeah, well, the kids need to be able to use them, so let's go for the smaller ones. So, so they can carry them, <laughs> yeah. and, and we should have a lot of them instead of just one central one. And but that's a good question I thought about today. Is did you use paint stripper on your Glen, or did you just grind the paint off? I used so first of all, I wet a rag with thinners and lay that on top, and that brought all the lettering off in an instant. And then, it didn't touch the red though, and then I just scuffed the surface of the red, just sanded it with the uh, soft in interface pad on the sander, with an 80 grit, just scuffed all that. Then it started coming off with thinners, and yeah. then there were little bits left, so I just carried on sanding it and just went through the grits and then put it on the polishing wheel. Yeah, because I've seen a few people who do restoration of all everything basically and they have this paint remover that you just brush on it within seconds yeah. it starts to just crumple and peel off and uh, I'm not sure if you can even get it over here but I was kind of asking what you were using and if it was a brand I could google to see if it's something I could get here because I think the paint strippers they use here I just I didn't use it it's a brand called Nitro Morse that seems like to be a pretty heavy duty thing, but I've only ever seen it really used on wood on gloss paints. But it, it, I presume it works on other paints. Um, I, I, first of all, I, I wondered whether the the, um, the fire extinguisher might be powder coated, but it, it did seem to come off like paint more than a powder coat. So I think I they think wouldn't spend the money on powder yeah. coating them. I don't think no. that's a. Yeah. No, I mean, the yeah. paint stripper I got for the gas canisters, I mean, the, I think I just bought some cheap stuff at BLT Amman, and, and the, that worked kind of. You had to bro put on a lot of it. But, I, I mean, the ones you see on YouTube, I, I just figure it's some American cancer in a in a bottle, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. Kills everything yeah. that you can't get over here. Let I me... Uh... <laughs> write that down you know, liquid cancer <laughs> <laughs> but if, even if you don't have any, ch any luck with that i mean just sanding it back to 320 gave a nice brush steel effect yeah so that, that, you know if you don't want to polish it up afterwards it's uh it's still pretty cool yeah and i might also just leave it red so if i can just pick the stickers off that might work i'll say just just a quick wipe over with thinners will fetch those straight off yeah so that's the plan. But I think I'll start that next week when we get home. I mean, we have uh, my mother is visiting for a few days and then we'll join her and go to her cabin. So the, the next week will be little to no workshop time. I forgot your mother was there tonight, actually. Should we should we call it a, a day now and so you can go and spend time with your mum and come back to do the uh, half pints in a couple of days she might be sleeping already so uh, <laughs> i mean we spent the entire day at the funeral so i don't uh, feel bad for uh, not uh, attending to her uh, for uh, 
the time we're yeah, doing this I'm podcast. just trying I'm just trying to segue out of this one. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you just want the episode to end, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Who needs segues? Just end it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>